Welcome to the Michigan Man Podcast on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew for Wolverine fans from coast to coast. Go Blue and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. With us on today's program will be the senior editor of our Michigan Bible, the Wolverine Magazine, John Borton. I love this time of year on the Michigan athletic scene. There is so much action, and what makes it even better is the fact we have so many of our winter sports teams having outstanding years. It's also great to have softball and baseball back in action because that reminds us warm weather is right around the corner. We cover a lot of ground on today's game day segment, so let's get to it. Up next is the longtime editor of our Wolverine magazine, John Borton. So stay with us. Joining us on our game day segment this week is senior editor of the Wolverine magazine, John Borton. John, as always, it's great to have you with us. And great to be with you, Mike. Uh, A lot of interesting things going on in the world of Michigan athletics, obviously. Oh, absolutely. A very, very busy time of the year. So let's uh, start with uh, what the number one topic for, I think, all of us right now, Michigan hoops. Peaking at the right time, no question about that. Uh, We have Illinois tomorrow night, Thursday, uh, Indiana on Sunday. Both of those games on the road. From your point of view, John, what does this team need to do to get into the big dance? That's uh, a great question and on everybody's mind at this point. Given uh, recent events and Michigan's uh, three, three wins in a row after we, <laughs> some of us sort of left uh, the Wolverines uh, hanging out to dry as far as uh, the big dance. It was like it's just not going to happen this year. Okay, you know what can what can they learn down the stretch and those sorts of things. Uh, now here they are, right on the the borderline. Some having them last in, some in, some having them first out. But uh, I would say a great start towards making the NCAA tournament would be to win one of these next two games. And that gives them 12 wins in the Big Ten. I, I understand the arguments about, uh, okay, they, they really underperformed in the, uh, in the non-conference season, uh, terrible loss to Central Michigan. But if you post after that 10 wins in regular season Big Ten play, or t- 12 wins, rather, that's doing a lot. And that has you up in the upper echelon of – one of the better leagues in the country. And I, I think it would be a very, very interesting argument to leave them out at that point. And certainly you want to do something once you reach the, uh, you don't want to go one and done in the, in the Big Ten tournament. But to secure one of these last two regular season games, I think would go a really long way. It's not going to be easy, as you noted, both of the games on the road. But if you get one, then I think you've put yourself in a very good and to many very unexpected position at this point. Well, there are so many things to like about how this team is playing right now. The backcourt of Doug McDaniel and Kobe Bufkin may be, uh, well, probably the most improved in the Big Ten, maybe even in the country, John, in the second half of the season. There's no question about it. And uh, we've been talking uh, for a long time that uh, the this season and the season turnaround hinged on the increasing maturity and production of of guys like Kobe Bufkin and like Doug McDaniel in the back half. And boy, have they come through. Kobe Bufkin has uh, blossomed into what uh, many are regarding as uh, as a future NBA player. No question about it. It's just a matter of when he's come up with, he came up with a huge shot against Michigan State to uh, to help the Wolverines over the top in that one at home. He has uh, been arguably their best player or right there with uh, Hunter Dickinson. And Doug McDaniel has uh, been just a a real revelation at point guard. Here's a kid that was looked on to maybe play uh, 
10, 12 minutes a game behind the, the transfer uh, starting point guard. Then said point guard goes down with injury. Doug McDaniel is suddenly the guy. And, uh, boy, he, is, uh, he has really grown. And I, I liked his comments recently when they asked him, did he consider himself a freshman? He says, no, I consider myself a leader. And he is now, you can see the confidence. You can see him assert himself and direct this show, and it's getting better and better and better. Uh, Michigan, for a long time, had a difficult time finishing games, certainly in the non-conference, and then sometimes in the Big Ten play. And not all that long ago, when uh, when Juwan Howard was even saying, we're not getting exactly what we're asking from the players on the court, well, that has changed in recent days. And uh, they're doing what the coaches are telling them. And the growth of the two young men that you cited has been central to that. And the growth of uh, McDaniel and Bufkin has really helped Hunter Dickinson taking a lot of the load off of him. But we've seen him come up really big in the last few weeks. Just look back to what happened with the, the, the incredible shot on Sunday against Wisconsin. Phenomenal. But he has really stepped up here down the stretch, hasn't he? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He he understands the importance of this and that his legacy in part will be shaped by the fact that, okay, he's a junior now. He's one of the better players in the country. He's seven one. He is uh, the central figure. When people think of Michigan basketball, they think of Hunter Dickinson. And uh, to, to have uh, what he's done in the first two years, followed by a potential non-making of the, the NCAA tournament. He doesn't want that. He, he, he really is motivated to, uh, to get that. And uh, what you saw on Sunday was the biggest shot in Michigan basketball as it pertains to the NCAA tournament since uh, Jordan Poole has unleashed one from, from deep. <laughs> To, uh, to drive Michigan late into the, uh, into the NCAA tournament. And this, is, this wasn't that. This is just a, a desperate scramble to make the tournament. But, oh, my, just to, to be able to catch that inbounds pass, to uh, maintain the poise, to gather himself, turn around, and then for a big man to, uh, to unload that deep, ball against uh, Wisconsin, send it to overtime, and then Michigan wins it was, you know, it, it's a potential season saver. And if pe- if this team, when, uh, when Sunday night rolls around after the Big Ten tournament, uh, if they're announced as one of these teams making the NCAA, a lot of people, that's, that's probably the highlight they'll show, uh, or, or certainly one of them uh, for this team. And that's, uh, you know, Hunter Dickinson draws a lot of attention in a lot of ways. Sometimes, you know, he'll, he'll bring on that, uh, that anti-hero sort of vibe intentionally, but uh, he is, uh, he was all hero on Sunday afternoon for Michigan and can certainly be that going forward. These last two wins have been so huge and we've done it without Jed Howard contributing. He did warm up, I know on Sunday, but, how close do you think we are to getting him back? Well, I think they were close enough so that he was arguing for playing in the game on Sunday. Yeah. He very much wanted to. And uh, and his father slash coach uh, said, no, ultimately we're going we're gonna, to uh, win this thing without you on the court because we don't want to aggravate whatever, you know, we, they haven't made clear exactly what's going on. But uh, I, I expect him back very soon Uh, it might be uh, tomorrow against Illinois it might be in the in the finale against Indiana a regular season but I would I would expect to see Jet Howard in at least one of these two uh, closing games of the regular season well you know another player uh, a lot of fans that I talk to tend to uh, over the course of the season sort of get down on is Terrence Williams Uh, and you know they'll say he hasn't developed like we uh, thought he would but you know, as Jawan pointed out last week, he said, you know, Terrence does a lot of things that make this team better, and they don't show up in the stats sheet necessarily, but he's a huge contributor. And getting him back after he was out just a, a few games, it's been a noticeable difference, especially on defense. On defense, on the boards, he, is, he can lend some toughness and muscle to a team that uh, at times needs that. 
And I, I, I think you're right. He uh, and Jawan Howard certainly knows what he's talking about when he says he will lend an element to this team that is not seen in the stat sheet. Uh, people, you know, see him missing threes, and he hasn't shot that well from from deep this year. But uh, he does give the Wolverines uh, some of what they need, and the more that they can uh, have players that uh, are tougher on the defensive end, physical on the boards, play with an edge, the the better chance that this team has of making the NCAA tournament and doing something if they get there. Well, we're getting contributions from not just the stars and the big guys, but uh, more and more guys each week, like Jace Howard, Will Shetter, Joey Baker coming up huge in moments. You know, we often overlook the support guys and focus on just the starters. But the bench guys and the secondary option players have really stepped it up here in the last month, haven't they? There's no question. Joey Baker's had some big games shooting the basketball, and uh, that's that's a really important piece of the puzzle. Um, I I just like to think of uh, Terrace Reed has gotten more attention. Yeah. He's, he's swung more towards the, the guy, one of the guys in the spotlight, but he certainly, no, he's a freshman, and he's, he started out where it was okay. This he's he's a liability at the end of games because of uh, ineffective free throw shooting. He's picked that up. He's worked so hard on it, and he gives you such a presence out there. He's more of that uh, defender, that physical guy, but also uh, certainly he can do some things with the basketball around the uh, around the basket. And when he is starting to make free throws, you can't just instantly foul him so I, I think he has been huge will shatter is uh someone who has all the want to you could ever ask for in a player he is refining his ability to play without fouling that's uh, something that the michigan coaches have worked really hard with him at and uh you know he's had some ups and downs physically he had, he had a while where he was uh he was injured, and then a while where he was not um, not feeling particularly well. Uh, he was sick, and I think he is learning a lot through this first season on the court. I just think that um, you know this this year will be nothing but good for him going forward because he's in a similar position to where uh, Kobe Bufkin uh, was a year ago. Now Kobe was a, a true freshman. Um, and uh, and Will Shutter had a, had a redshirt season, but still that first time on the court, it's it's very very different at this level. And uh, he's he's tucking away a lot of things that he will give to this team going forward. Well, what I find interesting, uh, John, is uh, you know over the last few weeks, if you watch the message boards and talk to fans, uh, there was a little bit of a grumbling about how Juwan was handling the team. You know, keeping in mind, and I don't think we always do, that this is a really young team that lost a couple of uh, key cogs uh, to the NBA draft last year. I think you have to say Juwan himself as a coach has been extremely patient in developing this team, and that patience we're seeing rewarded right now. No question. The the players know that he is uh, very much on their side, and yet he is willing, he was... Uh, willing to show uh, kind of a toughness in, okay, I'm not putting up with this, when he had the perception that uh, the the coach's orders weren't being carried out on the court after uh, – this was right preceding this recent win streak where he said, um, you know, we're we're asking things of them and they're uh, they're not – carrying that that them out they're seeing a better way something like that. He, he hinted that he was seeing from some freelancing that he didn't like so it, when you ha- when you get something like that from a coach who is uh, you know is a player's coach and you you know talks family and all that uh, that that's a wake-up call so I think he got their attention and you're right you you, you say that um, this is a team that has a bunch of new starters, four out of the five. Everybody supporting uh, and surrounding Hunter Dickinson was new as far as starting. And then the guy, Jalen Llewellyn, who was supposed to be your uh, graduate student uh, transfer in point guard, 
all of a sudden goes down before they hardly get going. And, uh, and you've got another freshman starting in the lineup. I think there's been a lot of growth there. And I think in, in some ways, you know, you look at Jawan Howard and he is still growing himself uh, because people you're, – you're coming off of an, uh, a stretch where you had a 40-year uh, a college head coach at the helm. And people want to make John Beeline comparisons. Um, I, I don't think that's fair at this stage. I mean, Jawan Howard is still absorbing and, and soaking in the college game and, uh, and refining his own techniques in uh, working with players and all that. And I, I think that uh, uh, there have been some really good signs of late. Oh, absolutely. I agree with you on that. We're taping on Wednesday morning. It's a big four-day stretch show with uh, Illinois and Indiana. So we'll, uh, we have the opportunity right in front of us to uh, lock into the NCAA tournament, but we'll see how that goes. But there's a lot going on, as we mentioned at the top of the show on the athletic scene. Spring football practice is underway, and uh, we've been hearing a little bit about that. Not much gets out of uh, Shem Beckler Hall, but it is just so exciting to look at this team and have a spring where you say, man, is this team loaded up, John? Absolutely. I, we know we knew certainly that the uh, that the offense was loaded when you found out that you're uh, you're going to have both of your starting uh, running backs back. Uh, certainly Blake Corum for most of the year and and Donovan Edwards uh, stepping in and to provide the unbelievably huge game against Ohio State and uh, beating them for a second straight year. And you've got your quarterback back, and a lot of uh, teams around the Big Ten cannot say the same. Uh, it, it's going to be a, a really good situation. Starts up front, you know, you've got three linchpins on the uh, offensive line back, and then you supplement that with the with this transfer portal where you're bringing in uh, not freshmen, but uh, four and five, four, three and four year players that can uh, compete and plug in with the, the very good talent that Michigan has coming up. Uh, you switch to the defensive side of the football, and uh, the biggest news I've heard so far is uh, Amarian Walker, the, the sophomore out of Louisiana, the 6'3", 180, who Jim Harbaugh has uh, essentially named a starter at yeah. cornerback until further notice. And you put him next to Will Johnson, who was – excellent in stepping in as a freshman last year and you've got a couple of young guys that are extremely talented at those positions you've got the safeties already and look what we saw out of the the young defensive linemen early in the year uh early in their careers last year as uh, as true freshmen um you you pull in one of the top linebackers in the Big Ten and maybe in the nation uh, that was a, a freshman last year at Nebraska. And, I mean, it, this they have a lot of pieces to the puzzle. And I, I'm really thoroughly looking for this team to come together and compete just like it has the past two years. I mean, at this point, I talked on, on our own uh, uh, broadcast recently that um, – I, I expect Michigan to go into the Ohio State game once again with uh, either no losses or one loss and getting ready to uh, try to take down the Buckeyes for a third straight year. And, and all that accrues with that, you know, you, you, you win that game if you're in position – then you're going to uh, be in the Big Ten Championship. You're probably going to be in the playoffs, and that's the potential for this team. It's nice to have a spring where there aren't that many questions about the team. You sort of, uh, you're just amped up about getting to the fall. If there are any questions that I get from listeners or here, it's about uh, Jim's contract. You know, when will he sign? Is the NCAA investigation the holdup in this process right now, John? I would say that they're dealing with the, the NCAA stuff. And uh, both sides are rather dug in. I don't know that that, that is the uh, the biggest holdup for signing a contract. I think they want to um, make sure that they get everything that uh, they possibly can get. And you know, it's 
it's interesting when when Jim Harbaugh goes before the media and says, you know, uh, what's what's the big deal? I'm here. I like I projected and and all that, and uh, I'm here as long as Michigan wants me. Well, you can take that a number of different ways. Does does that mean as long as Michigan keeps giving the football program what they feel it need they need to uh, to win like they have the last two years? Is that is that raising the bar on NIL? Is that uh, raising the bar on ability to transfer? Uh, those sorts of things that um, Jim Harbaugh could interpret as showing the love. A lot of things happening behind the scenes, yeah. no question about it, when it comes to football and this negotiation. So uh, I, I think there are a lot of elements involved, but, but Jim Harbaugh is no unquestionably playing chess at this point, and uh, he has earned uh, the leeway to do so because of the way this program has produced over the last couple of years. Well, there is no question about that. And uh, he's been very active in the off season. And one of the, uh, the great moves uh, was bringing back Chris Partridge uh, as a rehire, which I think everyone agrees was a, a fantastic move, wasn't it? Oh, no question about it. I mean, the, you know, Chris Partridge uh, could have been uh, one of the guys that uh, it was in line for even more had uh, had Jesse Minter uh, flown the coop. You know, Jesse Minter, the uh, the defensive coordinator, was talking with the Eagles, uh, Philadelphia Eagles, about uh, maybe leaving. And uh, you know, Chris Partridge would have been a natural for at least a co-defensive coordinator role. As it is, they're loaded up with someone who not only. Uh, comes back to Michigan, knows Michigan, loves it. He, he enjoyed his time here, no question about it. And he's certainly going to enjoy his time here now that uh, he's coaching for a two-time defending Big Ten champion. Chris Partridge is um, it, it knows his uh, special teams inside and out. Jay Harbaugh's done a great job with the special teams and will, I assume, continue to uh, to coach special teams, but Chris Partridge can help out there as well. Just a, just a home run higher in, uh, in moving this staff forward and this staff to keep it together for the, in large part, uh, I think is just monumental because this is uh, – this is a very, very good football staff. Yes, it is. And uh, one of the other staff news stories that sort of popped up over the last few weeks was that Shemmy Schembechler was in talking to Jim and I think Ward. Uh, he parted ways with the Raiders after uh, years of being a scout with that team. In what capacity do you think uh, he would be joining the staff, John, if that does indeed happen? Yeah, that's a good question. I think Shemmy could certainly help out in uh, in some scouting ways, in maybe in the uh, on the recruiting staff, uh, I you know it's it has been a while since I have uh, caught up with and talked to Shemmy, but uh, certainly uh, you've got the the Shem Beckler bloodline there, and someone who has uh, has a number of different experiences in different ways. That <clears throat> that would be a that would be very interesting. It's like uh, you know, old home week if if those sorts of things happen. <laughs> you know, you get you get Fred Jackson back on your staff, and uh, some of these guys that uh, have been around and uh, been so closely associated with Michigan. It's uh, Jim Harbaugh has that uh, feeling of uh, he's kind of the anti Rich Rodriguez. Rich Rodriguez was <laughs> cut ties with all of the the former or almost all of the former Michigan uh, guys. And uh, Jim Harbaugh is bringing them back and bringing them in and uh, creating a, a staff that I think is really maybe the best uh, staff or right up there with, uh, with those that I saw in the early 90s when I first started doing the magazine, when you had the Cam Cameron. And the and the less miles is on uh, on as assistant on the staff. No, I agree with that. And you know we've had Shemmy on the show uh, quite a lot, and he loves to talk about recruiting. He he, he earlier in his uh, career saw himself as being a recruiting coordinator, and of course that's really changed uh, uh, in college football that position. But 
You know, when you talk to Shemmy and you know Shemmy, what a great addition he would be, though, to uh, the recruiting in, in some capacity with Michigan because you won't talk to anyone that loves this program more and really knows how to evaluate talent. There's no question about it. And, uh, you know, he's, he is steeped in Michigan since he was uh, a little kid. Uh, you, you grow up uh, under Bo Schembechler and uh, you are going to – uh, be absolutely uh, amazing blue all the way. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where Shemmy's been. He will, uh, he has never left Michigan. Oh. And uh, in that sense, he would, he would be uh, someone who could hit the ground running. But I would love to see Shemmy back. Switching sure. gears for a few minutes, though, uh, as we mentioned at the top of the show, a lot going on right now. Let's talk about Coach Barnes Rico and her team for a minute, John. Great season. Uh, the Big Ten tourney gets underway on Friday. But it seems like heading into the tournament, I would think they're, they're already a lock for the NCAA, aren't they? I would think so. Um, you'd probably like to, to finish your season, uh, regular season, a little bit better than they have with uh, dropping some games. But the flip side of that is you're going into – uh, the Big Ten tournament with a, a very different uh, look. I mean, you, you've had a team that has been playing without its two best players. And that, of course, would be uh, your fifth-year senior guard, Leah Brown, and uh, sophomore guard, uh, Leila Filia. And both of them, uh, first team, all Big Ten, to have them out and then have them coming back uh, I, I think it's it's going to be huge for this team. Um, you know, there are various degrees of uh, of readiness. Um, Leah Brown uh, available. Uh, we heard from uh, Kim Barnes Arico herself, and uh, and Felia coming along after a, a lower body injury, and she is going to be back. Uh, they have said so those those aspects alone make this um, a really intriguing time for Michigan in, in the way to uh, to come back together to be all that it can be as a, as a team going into uh, tournament time and hockey's in you know somewhat of a similar situation they won eight in a row then struggled uh, with Ohio State and Notre Dame over the last two weekends. But this team is sitting in a really good position, and what an exciting team to watch, John. I think if they're not the youngest team in D1, they are certainly one of them. You watch them all year, and you think, man, they really haven't put it together yet. And with the talent they have, if they do, they're scary. No question about it. No question. And, and you, you, you look at the approach that um... – Brandon Narado uh, is taking with this uh, head coach looking at a team and saying, basically, you know, uh, we, they didn't finish the, the um, season exactly like they wanted to, as you alluded to, but he's talking about recent quote, I'm happier with how we played in losing. Maybe it's because we're already in second than we would have uh, if we won by five goals playing the wrong way, I feel better about our team heading into the playoffs. And so that's, I mean, he's, he's emphasizing the positives and saying he likes what he's seeing, uh, despite a little dip in the, uh, the bottom line results at the end of the regular season. So, yeah, I, I agree. It's a, it's a young team. It's an incredibly exciting team. And uh, all it needs to do is catch that hot streak coming into uh, tournament time, coming into the most important time of the year uh, for, for basketball, for uh, hockey, for a number of different uh, sports. And certainly Michigan has a chance to, uh, to shake things up nationally. And hockey so exciting to watch. As we said, young team, very young coach with Coach Nerado. He's killing it on the recruiting trail. Do you expect, you know, sometime soon or maybe right after the season, we'll see that interim tag removed? Well, I'll, I'll just say this. They, he has given them no reason not to remove. Yeah. I, he, this has been um, a, a very encouraging season for the Wolverines. Certainly, I'm sure 
they want him focused on his team right now and nothing else. And we want to see how uh, they go through uh, tournament time. But you were right on in terms of how he's recruiting, how he's handled this team, the the look of it. And I, I, like I said, they – I haven't seen any reason to not remove that interim tag. We'll see how it goes. I would think it would be uh, sooner rather than later, maybe allowing for the, the end of the season to take place first. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, number four, Michigan women's uh, gymnastic clinched another Big Ten title over the weekend, which is their eighth in program history, second in a row. Another exceptional year for Coach Bev Plocky's powerhouse program, John. No question. One of the um, the real um, iconic programs for Michigan and has been for a long, long time. Uh, Bev Plocky does such a, a fantastic job with them. A little bit, a uh, little bit of extra intrigue this year because in the in the Big Ten championships, Michigan will be the number two seed mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to the number one seed. And that number one seed at this point is Michigan state. So uh, that, that itself lends some intrigue. You've got uh, a battle at the top in the big 10 and, and certainly then Michigan looks beyond the big 10 big 10 has just kind of been a, uh, you know, another check mark on the, on the, uh, the dance card. Uh, but Michigan every year with women's gymnastics sets its sights very, very high, and that means a uh, national ranking and uh, a shot at a at a national championship. So we will see how they are going forward. But um, like I say, this is uh, this is a a team and a program that has earned the respect of one of the greatest certainly Michigan women's programs of all time and uh, and right up there challenging with the best of the best. No question about that. Well, Michigan wrestling uh, headed into the Big Ten tournament, four and three conference record, 11 and four overall in what is just an incredibly loaded Big Ten. It always is, but it's been another solid year for the wrestling team, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it really has. And, and what you say is so very true there. Um, that uh, you you can be in the middle of the Big Ten and still be one of the very very best teams in the nation. And uh, I, I, you know, uh, Michigan takes a back seat to uh, to very few in this country with the way this uh, program has been conducted. Uh, you know, five and three in the conference, eleven and four overall. Uh, but uh, they they will give you a battle, and I uh, I'm I'm interested to uh, to see what they do uh, in the uh, in the Big Ten championships coming right around the corner, and uh, those being in Ann Arbor, it's going to be a fun uh, fun event locally, no question. Well, final question before we let you get away, John. Uh, spring is on the horizon, uh, maybe not weather wise uh, for <laughs> for a while. Uh, but both softball and baseball have been at it now. Softball for two weeks. Baseball just got underway last week. Ladies off to, a, you know, almost 500 start. The men doing pretty darn well. But it's a big transition year from a coaching perspective for both of those programs, isn't it? Yeah, no question. Uh, you, you look at um, for so many, many years, you it was just uh, automatic. Carol Hutchins. Wolverines and uh, what uh, what she's doing with uh, with her program, and you know they're going to be uh, be excellent. and uh, And now to have uh, Bonnie Thal at the top of that program, uh, she's been such a, an integral part of it for so many years, and so so very good. Um, I, I think that this will uh, be a continuation of of what we have seen in the past. I think that uh, she knows how to get it done. Uh, She has all the support in the world. And I just, I have no doubt that Bonnie Thal will continue what Carol Hutchins uh, has created around, uh, 
alumni field and around uh, around Michigan. Uh, baseball, Tracy Smith. Uh, you certainly know that uh, he has uh, plenty of experience in in getting things done on the baseball side of things. Um, you know, steam off to a four and three start. You understand that uh, they're taking on some teams that uh, can play outside year round, and uh, they're playing on on the way turf because that's uh, because Michigan is iced over at this time of year. And so you're going to be at a disadvantage in, in both those sports. It's not, it is not how softball and baseball start for Michigan. It's how they finish. And we've learned that lesson a number of times. Well, as uh, you've heard over the last half an hour, so there is a lot going on in the Michigan athletics scene. Always is this time of year. And we'll, uh, we'll focus for the next four or five days or, hopefully a couple of weeks on uh, Michigan basketball. But as always, it's great to have you uh, on the show, John. Our guest today, senior editor of the Wolverine magazine, John Borton. John, we appreciate you being so gracious with your time, and we look forward to that next visit. Thanks a lot, Mike. Always great to be with you. On Quick Hits today, we'll keep it short because John and I hit on just about everything happening on the Michigan sports scene right now. In the coming weeks, we'll have more spring football talk and hopefully basketball, men and women, along with hockey, gymnastics, and wrestling. It has been an outstanding year so far for all of those teams and could be even better in the coming weeks. That does it for another show. Make sure you tell your family and friends about us and join again next week. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. Have a great Wolverine week, everyone. Until we meet again, take care, and as always, go blue. Thanks for joining us today on The Michigan Man, here on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network, and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew. Our listener lines are open 24-7 for your calls, at 313-263-4842. That's 313-263-4842. Or email us at the Michigan Man Podcast at yahoo.com. That's the Michigan Man Podcast at yahoo.com. The Michigan Man Podcast is produced at the studios of Robin Lynn Productions, Allen Park, Michigan, and is not affiliated with the University of Michigan. Go Blue!